everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1997's Titanic and its brand new Paramount 4K Blu-ray that just came out. So Titanic was originally released in December of 1997. It ended up becoming the biggest picture of all time. Not only did it win 11 Academy Awards in 97. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> for best picture, but also for best director and nine other Academy Awards. And until Avatar in 2009, another James Cameron film, this was the highest grossing movie of all time. And since then, it's ended up making about $2.2 billion at the box office with all of its re-releases. And it's probably one of the most beloved films ever made. But it wasn't always expected to be that way. You know, James Cameron has an obsession with shipwrecks. And the big one, the big kahuna, was the Titanic. And he was just inspired to make a film about this. So he approached 20th Century Fox at the time and said, Hey, I want to do this. I want to do some deep sea diving. And I want to make the best Titanic film ever. He decided to combine the real singing of the Titanic with a fictional love story. And those actors in this film are played by Kate Winslet, who plays Rose. And Jack Dawson is played by... Leonardo DiCaprio and these two just shot up to superstardom after this movie but this movie's budget ballooned up so much that 20th Century Fox was worried they didn't think that this movie was going to be a hit people were doubting James Cameron at the time and people always doubt James Cameron even with Avatar and Avatar 2 but yet he always proves us all wrong that he knows how to make a movie that gets butts in the seats and this one was no different but Paramount decided to jump on board with 20th Century Fox and help fund this movie because the budget was over $200 million in 1997. That is just absolutely crazy. So they were very, very worried to the point that James Cameron even offered to drop his profit share of this movie because he just wanted to make the film. He's an artist at heart. He's obsessed with shipwrecks. He's obsessed with the water. You guys hearing the song okay up there? James Cameron, explorer of the sea. And this movie really is one of the best movies ever made. Is it one of my favorite films ever? No, it's not even close to my top five favorite James Cameron movies. You know, I always appreciate this movie more for the actual shipwreck than the actual love story in this movie. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio are doing a great job in this movie. Obviously, this is what really put them on the map as actors. They've been working before this. Leonardo DiCaprio had given actually some great performances before this movie that, you know, aren't as beloved as Titanic. You know, he kind of became a teenage heartthrob from this movie. But that's it. After this movie, they are famous. This was the biggest film in the world. If you go back to 97, 98, everybody was talking about Titanic. My father and my stepmother, who aren't even into movies, they had the VHS copy of Titanic. That big double-decker VHS copy, they actually had that in their house. And I think it was the only piece of physical media they ever owned. That's how popular this movie was. People got wrapped up in the love story of this film. You know, the love story is great to, you know, really put an emotional arc into this film and really show, like, what these real people were like in the movie. And that's one thing that James Cameron just captured perfectly. There is over 800, like, extras working on this movie, and it really shows putting them all in the costume. Everything just feels big and epic. The ship feels big and epic, and that's because they really built a replica of the ship that they were able to sink. You know, it was on, like, levers where you could, like, turn it up to a 90-degree angle. And these stuntmen were just put through hell making this movie. All of the actors... Even even Kate Winslet said she never wanted to work with James Cameron again after this film, mainly because he's just a big hard ass. He's a perfectionist. He wants the best from his actors. You know, there's a lot of directors out there like that. Like David Fincher likes to do like 90 to 100 takes. But James Cameron, he's a yeller. That guy yells. He likes to scream at people. And Kate Winslet said she was afraid of this guy. You know, people got sick on set. There's that famous story of somebody poisoning the soup and 50 people had to go to the hospital because they were high on PCP. And one of those people was James Cameron. Even though he was able to puke it up, apparently he just looked disheveled after this. So people wonder, was that because they don't like James Cameron and they wanted to poison him? He just drank a cup of poison! <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure. They never figured out who did that. But they suspect it was somebody on the crew. And the movie itself... I think is just very 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 well made even if i don't love this movie as much as i love other james cameron movies i really do appreciate this film you know it's over three hours long and i am never bored throughout this entire film but once they hit the iceberg or once they're approaching the iceberg i am locked into the story that's even when i start to care more about jack and rose's love story you know i'm not really too into that as the film is going on billy zane's in this movie and he's kind of playing his character a little bit over the top mustache twirl and villain you know the rose's fiance he's just a real piece of shit we get kathy bates in this movie giving a great performance i just love how kathy bates has such range she can appear in a movie like this and then in the next year appear in a comedy with adam sandler as the water boy's mother it's just incredible the range she has she is really underappreciated as an actor goes and you know 
obviously the big people who get the credit for this movie are Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. But one performance I never hear anyone talk about and is one of my favorite performances in this film is Victor Garber's performance. He plays Thomas Andrews, the guy who built this ship. Even though he's this big, rich, famous person, he's like interacting with all the first class passengers mainly. You know, he doesn't treat the lower class passengers like crap like a lot of the other people. That's a big theme of this movie is the class system because, you know, Jack comes from the lower class while Kate Winslet comes from the upper class. You know, I even there's even a point in this movie where Rose's mom says, are we going to be seating in the lifeboats by class? Like, you're about to die and you're worried about how you're perceived by people? I mean, that's just a big theme in this movie. And, you know, in 2023, with how the world is, like looking at billionaires and how class warfare is going on right now, to go back to 97 and see, you know what? Things just really don't change. Even back in 1912, things were the same. People just always looked down at lower class people. I mean, that's the big disgusting thing in this movie when you're watching it, is you're just watching how they're trying to lock in the lower class people to the bottom floors. And like, oh no, just go back to your room. Don't worry, we're going to let you up in a second as the ship is just sinking. I mean, that stuff is just absolutely incredible that they got on film and it'll make you pissed off while watching it. But Victor Garber's character, he's really doing a great job of just showing the compassion and the guilt he feels. From this moment, no matter what we do, Titanic will founder. I mean, this actor just has great face acting. Like, you can see the guilt and sadness behind his eyes. Like, he just let everybody down. It's his fault that this ship is sinking. And the captain feels the same way. He's going to go down with his ship. You know, they feel guilty more than anything. You know, they let everybody down. And one thing about the class system that I always found fascinating, in this movie they're showing how, you know, the man really does speak for the women. They appreciate women in a sense, and they understand that women and children, if we don't have enough lifeboats, they go first. We're men. At the end of the day, we go down with the ship. But of course, the first class men, they can't accept that, and a bunch of them do end up getting in lifeboats, taking the place of what could have been women and children. And all that stuff is pretty disgusting when you're watching this movie as well, just seeing, like, you really are just a selfish, selfish person. Like, do you know, we see the guys singing, playing the violins, you know. It was a pleasure working with you guys tonight. Like, all that stuff, like, they are honorable men. They're going down with the ship. They're going to try and keep people calm as they are facing their death. And we just don't live in a world where people do that anymore. So those aspects of the movie, I really do appreciate. I wish I got wrapped up in the love story a little bit more, but overall, this is still a fantastic film. If by chance you haven't seen Titanic, I don't believe it. I'm pretty sure that if you are born anytime after 1998, you have to see Titanic as a rite of passage. To live here on this earth, it is one of the most financially successful movies ever. One of the most successful movies at the Academy Awards at 111 matching Ben-Hur's record so this is a very 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 popular film it's not the greatest film ever made but from a practical effects standpoint it really is very impressive we just don't get movies like this anymore even from James Cameron with movies like Avatar he's really leaning into the special effects the CGI effects and trying to build up that technology than he was back then where he was combining miniatures CGI and practical effects so this movie does have to be seen just to be appreciated because it is one of those classic films it's even in the National Library of Congress for being culturally significant and it absolutely is so I could definitely recommend Titanic even if you don't want to check out this brand new Paramount Pictures 4k blu-ray that we are going to talk about right now <laughs> Here it is, the 25th anniversary 4K Blu-ray of Titanic. I got the standard slipcover packaging, but there is a really, really, really nice collector's edition out there if you want to grab that. I mean, I know a lot of people did, and they pretty much loved it, but like I said, Titanic, not one of my favorite films ever. It's not even one of my favorite James Cameron films ever. That will always be The Terminator, but I can appreciate this film. I am very happy to own it. I had actually previously owned the 2012 Blu-ray that came out from Paramount Pictures as well, and that's what I was comparing this 4K Blu-ray to. And it is a pretty big upgrade from that Blu-ray to the 4K. The Blu-ray actually is not that bad. When I was comparing the two, the Blu-ray was pretty good. Honestly, I thought the stuff that looked the ugliest on the Blu-ray were the early scenes with Bill Paxton's character when they're diving down into the sea. And then when they're talking to the older Rose on the boat, I felt like that stuff was the weakest looking on the Blu-ray. But when they end up on the Titanic, I guess it was just lit that much better. And they were just able to combine the effects in such a way that it looked pretty damn good on the Blu-ray. But the 4K really does enhance those early scenes in the movie to the point where you your jaw hits the floor, you gotta gather it back up, and throughout the entire 4K visually, it is just stunning. You get HDR10 and Dolby Vision on this one, 
it is just enhanced in every single way from the lighting you know we get just the brightest of brights and that is really the only imperfections on this 4k blu-ray in my opinion is sometimes it gets a little too bright for its own good and these are very very minor complaints these are really the only issues i could find in the visuals is that you know i had points and i saw this from hd movie source as well that it could look a little bit too sharp and that's going to be you know for certain people's taste that might be a little bit ugly to them but it's nothing like terminator 2 where the dnr is all over this place and everyone's skin looks unnatural no you don't have to worry about that here the skin looks very very natural you're going to notice smaller details that you never noticed before when you were watching it on the previous blu-ray on dvd or that double decker v VHS. For me, this is actually one of my biggest introductions to physical media was Titanic on VHS because like I said, my parents never bought physical media you know, at my dad's house. My mom loved physical media, but my dad, you know, he never bought movies. I think Titanic's Double Decker VHS was the only VHS he ever owned in my opinion. I'm pretty sure he never owned a single other one, but for some reason him and my stepmom loved Titanic. They had to have that VHS so they could watch it whenever they want. So I remember this VHS very, very well. I remember putting in the second tape and just watching it from the point when they hit the iceberg on that's it that's really the only part of the movie i cared about when i was a kid in 1998 to the point that i asked for titanic on vhs and my mother i guess just assumed that i like boats that she got me speed 2 on vhs so i've probably seen speed 2 more than a hundred times in my opinion because when you're a kid and you don't have too many vhs's you rewatch the same ones that you have so i'm an expert on speed 2 so if you guys ever want to know anything about speed 2 cruise control i'm your guy but back to Titanic and its glorious 4K Blu-ray. So if you've seen this in all of its other previous versions, this is definitely the definitive edition when it comes to visuals. And then, of course, the audio. We get a brand new Dolby Atmos track here to go along with a lot of other great tracks. It also is like compatible with Adobe TrueHD 7.1. We get a couple other tracks in other languages. We get some good subtitle options. Not as much as what other Paramount releases do, but we still get a good amount here for accessibility options. And the menu system, it's really weird. When I was comparing the Blu-ray and the 4K, I put put the 4k and i was like oh my god this menu system looks pretty damn old that's weird for a paramount release then i put the blu-ray in i was like oh they just recycled the same menu system from the previously released Blu-rays. They even used the same score in the menu system. And that's one thing I didn't bring up in my movie review. The score, the James Horner score for this movie is phenomenal. <laughs> And also the Celine Dion song is just incredible. I love that Celine Dion song. I've said it here before and I'll say it again. I think Celine Dion is one of our greatest singers ever. I think she is the greatest female singer we ever had. It's either her or Whitney Houston, I, you know, depending on the day. Those two are the greatest female singers of all time. And this song is incredible. But the James Horner score really helps to move this movie along. And with that brand new Dolby Atmos track... It's just going to be coming through your speakers so well. And I mean, when the boat crashes and we have all those special effects and sound effects going off in the background, you are just going to really, really appreciate this Dolby Atmos track. It really is phenomenal. Not one of the best Dolby Atmos tracks I've ever heard, but it's still a pretty damn good Dolby Atmos track. And it is an upgrade over the previously released audio, so you won't be disappointed with that. And one thing I didn't bring up with the visuals, because it's not really a big deal, but... One thing they did was they used CGI in certain scenes mainly for the iceberg, and it was really never noticeable on previous releases, but when you upgrade the 4K, you throw HDR and Dolby Vision over it, that CGI iceberg and some of the smoke coming out of the big smoke towers on the ship, uh, it's very noticeable that it's, you know, the CGI hasn't aged well, but it's really nothing worth complaining about because it's so minor because they combine this movie with practical effects, miniatures, and CGI. So it's not relying on the CGI, but because of this 4K and its beautifulness, you're going to notice these little imperfections while you're watching the film now that you probably wouldn't have noticed back in 1998 when you got that VHS. And as far as the extras go, all the extras that were on the previously released Blu-ray are carried over to this. And all you get now is a brand new Looking Back documentary on the making of the film to go along with the other documentaries that are included on this. So yeah, I have complained about Paramount not releasing enough extras with their new 4K releases. Well... Don't worry about that now. Paramount gave us all the bells and whistles when it comes to extras. There is over 15 hours of extras, and that's why it took me so long to review this movie because I had to cycle through all of the extras, check them out, make sure they worked, and I really did get wrapped up in that new documentary. That's all I ever asked for is when you release a film physically, if you can get a new Looking Back documentary, you get all the previously released extras, you get that new documentary, and it is a very, very well-made documentary. I think you guys are going to really appreciate it. So the extras are a 10 out of 10 on this. I really love what they did. They gave us everything we could have ever hope for and then some. So I'm very, very happy with this release of Titanic. I wish this was one of my favorite films because this is definitely a great physical release of Titanic. All of my concerns about a James Cameron film coming to 4K after the PTSD I had of Terminator 2, 
Don't have to worry about that. It's got my hopes up for next year when we get True Lies, Aliens, and The Abyss on 4K because they did a great job here with Titanic on 4K Blu-ray. So how would I rate this 4K Blu-ray on a score of 1 to 10? I gotta be honest, I still have to give this 4K Blu-ray a 9.5 out of 10. It is not the best 4K of 2023, but it's pretty high on the list. It's still a great release. We get a big upgrade in almost every single department. The packaging, you know, if you get that collector's edition, you're going to be very, very happy, I'm sure, but I can't compare it myself. This regular slipcover version is very nice. You know, you come inside, same artwork underneath. You get your standard Paramount black 4K disc and blue Blu-ray disc, which will have all your extras on it. So, you know, packaging, nothing too special as far as the standard release, but it's still pretty damn good. And, you know, giving us that very nice collector's edition, you can't complain there. So again, this is a great release and I can definitely recommend it. You know, maybe you want to wait for a sale depending how you feel about the film Titanic. But if you are a fan of the film Titanic, this is the definitive edition of the film and you will be very, very happy that you picked this one up. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to become a channel member like our two producers, Jason Martin and John Doe Juggalo, or our two channel directors, Kevin Kruger and Frank Rodriguez, you can do that. There's a link in the description below. You can join any of our channel memberships, even if you want to just become a friend of the channel, help support this channel financially so we can keep bringing you these awesome 4K Blu-ray reviews. But if it's no pressure at all, if you just want to help us out, the best way to do that is just by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, getting out in those streets, and telling your friends about us. And then we will be seeing you around. <laughs>